Hello friends, my name is Eric from RapidFlow. Welcome to this video showing what I think is amazing about the Waldorf Iridium, why it's one of the best user interfaces I've ever used on a synth, and uh, yeah, how you can use it to make music if you don't do sort of ambient film music space style stuff, but if you actually make more four to the floor, uh, melodic techno, progressive house, uh, yeah, stuff like that. So before we start, let me give you a quick demo uh, of what this thing can sound like in the context of a uh, uh, four to the floor track and then we'll dive in and I'll show you the things that I think are really cool about the synth. All right, let's go. I just realized I'm supposed to make a video where I show you this thing, not just demo it. I'm sorry, I got carried away. It's just, it's really an inspiring instrument. It sounds really good. Okay, back to the matters at hand. Um, so what am I doing here? How am I running this synth right now? As you may know, let me find the right view for it. Okay, this synth basically has two layers. And what this means is we can send it MIDI on uh, just one channel in my case and put two different sounds and um, use it uh, multi-timbrally, I think is the correct word. So on layer one, I have a bass sound. On layer two, I have a pad. And right now, just because I was a bit lazy and wanted to do this quickly and stay in the flow of the inspiration I had for this, I've just sent it, uh, as you can see on Bitwig Studio here, I've just sent both of those parts the same little MIDI sequence. And what's making these things sound more complex is that I have the arpeggiator and the sequencer engaged um, on these patches. So let me show you a bit uh, what that looks like in here. Um, right now we're on layer one, which is a, a base that I've made. Uh, I've, uh, what I've done is I've linked um, the filters so that they're just kind of working as one uh, filter together. And where it gets interesting, I think, is in the autoplay, uh, which is where I have uh, the sequencer on instead of the arpeggiator. And uh, where I have um, this sequence running. Let's have a listen. I should set this thing to pick up mode, I forgot to do that, but one after the other. Okay, so let's have a look at the perform mode and actually let me switch off the paddy kind of sound in the background on that layer. Um, so here you see the sequence that I've made. It's uh, six notes, uh, it's kind of like a standard ARP, low, low, high, low, high, and then up seven semitones. So the thing, first thing that I really like that I found uh, working with this instrument is that the swing that it has is amazing. I'm a bit of a, uh, is the word fetishist? I'm a bit of a, f I love swing if it's well executed. I have a couple of options for swing in my studio. Um, let me show you a bit. So I have a ERM multi-clock. Um, I have the BeatStep Pro. A lot of these instruments have swing in them. All the Electron stuff has swing in them. And actually the Electron is really good. The BeatStep is okay. The Oxy Instruments has a really nice swing. But right now the best swing that I've heard uh, is from the uh, Iridium so far. I still have to dive deeper into the Oxy, so let's see. So let me show you what a difference that swing uh, makes. So now we're at neutral.
So yeah, as far as uh, swing goes, that absolutely uh, checks the box for me. It sounds really nice and groovy. It's like, yeah, doing a good swing. I don't know why it's so complicated, but this thing has it nailed. Um, that's the first thing that I really love about using it. The second thing, and I think kind of one of the most important things to mention, is how incredible the user interface is because it has a big fat touchscreen. Um, it was a bit like I had to get used to the idea of having a touchscreen for a synthesizer. I've, I've never used a synth that has a touchscreen before, I've just realized. And oh my God, it's a game changer. I love the fact that it's context sensitive. So whenever you move a parameter, uh, that's what you're going to see on the screen. So if you need to go somewhere on the screen, actually often it's fastest just to move a parameter and then uh, you'll be immediately where you need to be. Um, but of course you can also touch stuff on the screen and, uh, and move it using this button or you can just move it using the, the context buttons on the side. I've realized working with the touchscreen on a complex synth like this is amazing. I was a little bit apprehensive about it at first. I wasn't really sure is it like going to be, you know, another computer feely thing in the studio, but it's absolutely feels like an instrument. Um, yeah, and for an instrument that's this complex, there is no menu diving really. I mean, it's like it doesn't feel like menu diving because everything is on a button. Uh, if you want effects, uh, if you want to mess with your oscillators, if you want to uh, change the sequencer if you want to change your levels it's all one push away and actually uh, that one's not touch sensitive funny some are some are not but yeah there's always a way ah that's a meter there's always a way to make things do what you want to do really quickly which is why I'm able to do kind of a live jam with this thing in real time because it's just really fast you can control things really really quickly and by the way that jam was just one oscillator on on each layer one oscillator on for the bass. Uh, actually, no, the bass seems to have had two on and the pad is just one oscillator. Uh, yeah, you can see here, it's uh, only that waveform is on and for the os it's true for the bass, I had a, a octave up sound also running, but nothing complex yet, like no samples, no like, um, yeah, like advanced uh, synthesis methods that this uh, wonderful synth contains. So the interface, first of all, Axel is a great friend of mine who uh, designed this interface. This is the most beautiful synth interface that I've ever come across, the way that it's balanced. It's incredible. So I guess this would be my point three. Yeah, initially, honestly, when I unpacked this, I was a little bit overwhelmed. I was like, whoa, this thing looks like it can do a lot. But it is super intuitive. Like, it just feels so nice to work with. Uh, all the most important stuff is immediately available. Um, so you have uh, obviously your oscillators on the left, your mixer, that makes perfect sense. I love how that's been done. You can pick your oscillator styles here with buttons and the most important core functions for the oscillators are right there. Then you have your mixer, then you have your context sensitive buttons which depend on what's on the screen, what they will do. Above here is kind of like, I guess you could call it your top menu. Uh, where you can go into separate parts of the synthesizer. So uh, the way it's laid out, it's super, super clear and, uh, and really enjoyable and fast to work with. I want to just move something off screen so I can show it to you a little bit better, which is over here, uh, there is uh, like dedicated controls for sequencing, arpeggiating, chord functions, which I haven't even started with, uh, obviously transpose, etc. And then there's like buttons that you can program yourself. Just having this latch for sequence, uh, start, stop, etc. It's so comfortable. It's so well done. Also, another part of the user interface that, in a sense, it's very simple, but they've just done it right. Yeah, and I think now we can come to the fourth thing that I can say about this synth that I think is incredible. It's the key bed. I think quite a bit has been written about this already, or or maybe made videos about. This is by far the best key bed that I have ever used with polyphonic aftertouch. Um, yeah, I'm not going to get into that right now because it's all kind of set up for techno here. I'd have to scroll through one of the 4,000 <laughs> presets that it has, but there's tons of videos showing it. The key bed feels amazing to play with. It's all I use now to play uh, also every other synthesizer that I have in my studio. I don't think I'll ever give it up because it's by far the best key bed I've used. I used to have various key beds here, which I've now packed up in boxes or sold because this is just really the next level of quality. And the fact that it has polyphonic aftertouch is amazing. There's not that many keyboards. I think this may be one of the very few keyboards actually that has that. I think the Hydra synth may have that. 
Uh, but yeah, really, really nice Fatar keyboard. Feels amazing to play with. It's like, yeah, deluxe. It's like Mercedes <laughs> in a keyboard. So um, great job. Uh, uh, my friends at Waldorf uh, and uh, friends at Fatar that uh, uh, put these things together. It feels like a really, like a really, really proper instrument having such a great user interface, such a great keyboard. It's heavy. It's like really properly well built. Um, some people complain that it doesn't have the length of keyboard of the Quantum, but I think having the Quantum as the big, big for the players and the slightly smaller Iridium, it's a wise decision to have it a little bit smaller. Uh, yeah, you have like your distortion section here, you have uh, your LFO one and two, there's multiple more inside the box, but you have, you know, with two here, you have a great place to start and you have your effects where you can control a delay and a reverb in my case, and then you're set. So that is amazing. Um, what else? I mean, obviously it has a ton of sounds, but designing sounds on it is super, super easy, um, which we're going to get to into a different video, which is linked somewhere in the description or somewhere here. I'm going to do a sound design video to show you how I made the sounds that I demoed to you. But this is more just looking at the synth about what stuff I think is cool. I mentioned um, the um, sequencer. There is also um, an arpeggiator, which is really nice, and it actually has multiple kinds of patterns. So it will it can sound very different from like a standard arpeggiator. You can tell it where you want it to reset in the loop. Uh, the release gate function on it is really great uh, to get um, the sound really tight and small if you want it, or kind of more open and flowing. Uh, MIDI clock reception from the multi-clock has been super tight. It's working really, really well. Uh, but if you sync this off of your DAW, uh, you can just sync it with MIDI clock. All right, let me show you the arpeggiator and uh, yeah, how it sounds and that I think it's really cool. Let's have a listen. Yeah, so as you can see, it has tons of options for the arpeggiator. Um, inside of this, there's all kinds of functions for how exactly you want it to work. So you have a great arpeggiator, and then you have the sequencer that you can program with the notes that you want and the length that you want. Let's listen to this. Yeah, and if you want to change one of those notes, it's so easy. You can just click it, and you can take it. Uh, that's the, going to the next note. You can click it, and then you can lower it with this pitch button. Here we go. So let me show you what that would sound like. As you can tell, I'm having way too much fun with this thing. Okay, uh, going back to matters at hand, the filters. This is something I want to ask Waldorf, which I'm a little bit surprised by. I haven't been able to figure out how to route filter one into filter two. So for example, you can do a low cut and a high cut, and you can really sculpt the frequency range for your sound. I, I got to reach out to their support, or maybe it's something that hasn't been implemented, which would be a bit weird. Because I looked in the manual, I looked everywhere, but I could not find a way to send filter one into filter two and then uh, out further. Maybe it's to do with it being fully stereo that it's using both filters. Maybe then it would collapse to mono, which would be bad for some sounds. Anyway, uh, about the filter that I like, I really like the different models that are in here. As you can see right now, it's set on a Largo model. I don't exactly know what 
SVF, but it's the default. Uh, the Largo sounds really good for electronic music. There's a Nave filter. PPG sounds really good for electronic music. The Quantum's a bit smoother. It's also nice, but uh, I think for electronic music, I would recommend the Largo. It's really nice. Um, the fact that you have so many different options and so many different filter models that you can choose for uh, whatever it is that you're planning to filter, it's amazing. Uh, and they all sound quite different and really good. Uh, I very much like the 24dB 30 low pass right now. The one that's kind of SEM inspired with the 12dB also sounds really great. Let's have a quick listen to it also just for fun. Here we go. Now we're on the 12dB filter. Yeah, it's a bit more smooth, not quite so like gnarly as the 24 dB uh, one. Um, yeah, so that's super, super nice. Now coming to the oscillator section here. Um, right now, I think I'm only using um, one oscillator. Let, let me take this down to one oscillator to just make this a bit clearer. So I'm going to switch off the second oscillator, uh, take its volume down, volumes are down, and now we're only using oscillator one. I was pretty amazed when I figured out how wide this synth can sound, even if it's playing uh, just monophonic uh, with just one voice. So I'm going to go to the voices section and I'm going to tell it yeah, that this layer one, uh, which is over here, is playing um, not unisono, it's just a monophonic voice. So have a listen. Right, pretty nice. Now have a listen what happens when I grab the kernel button of which there are, what's it called actually? Wait, it's not called kernel, it's called spectral control repeats count event, depending on which um, one you're on. I think this is called the reps. Yeah, um, have a listen. It's better, I can't explain it, better to listen. sound wide so nicely just with the turn of one button. Um, yeah, if you make electronic music, you know, making certain stuff sound wide can be a bit challenging. Usually you have to sacrifice voices for it. Uh, with this, there's just like this weird, what is it here? Kernels, count button where it just, everything gets amazingly wide and you can do really cool stuff um, interacting with the width and with the envelopes. I was messing around with this yesterday. Like, yeah, it's incredible how great with just one oscillator with one waveform I can make a bass line that sounds this wide. And it feels like it's also very controlled and in sync because sometimes when you make stuff wide, it gets very sloppy. Uh, so let me take this kernel count down and show you what uh, that usually sounds like when you do stuff wide using unisono. So let's give it just two voices now to start. And the way usually this is done uh, is that there's a little bit of delay on the oscillators and a bit of detune, and let's pan it out really wide. So have a listen. This is what most synths make wide sounds sound like. Like you see, as soon as I start to add more voices, it just becomes chaos. I can take the detune down and the delay down. So let's have a listen again. So yes, the fact that you can decide exactly how your unisono is going to sound in the stereo field, if it's going to be really tight, if it's going to have drift or not, if there's going to be any delay on the voices, it's incredible. So I love the fact that it's so simple. There's multiple ways uh, to get sounds to be really wide. And, and remember, right now we're using one monophonic oscillator to make this bass line. 
What's another thing that I've uh, really enjoyed using this? Um, the former. And so you can choose the way your filters, etc., are going to be right. And right now, what I prefer to do is actually, you can see here, there's like one oscillator on going to the digital former, going to the filters, and then there's a delay and a reverb on. And the cool thing is, I have all of this stuff in direct grip in the user interface. It's all there. And even for two sounds, because I can switch uh, between the layers. So this is like this is the most important building blocks. I, I could imagine taking this thing easily on stage and doing this kind of stuff live. It would be incredibly fun, um, which is not something I could say of every synth I have in my studio. Um, yes, back to the matters of hand. Um, the former. Let me show you what you can do with this with the sound. Like You can really mind bend people out on the dance floor with it. Um, yeah, let's have a listen. Yeah, like that. <laughs> that would rip your head off if you listen to that on a loud system. It's incredibly fun what the former can add to the sounds. I would recommend to put it before the filters because otherwise it just gets crazy and yeah, it just becomes very close to just fat distortion. Um, the effects are great to have on board in the synth. What I was doing just now, uh, jamming like that, makes it really easy. There's a bunch of choices you have for effects, as you can see here. Uh, what I've chosen to do is choose a delay and then uh, reverb for effect two. That's all that I've been using right now to start, but there's more slots. Um, and the cool thing is that there is buttons for each of those effects right on the front panel where you can control that. Uh, so let me uh, take out this uh, mind twisting modulation and show you. Yeah, super cool. Uh, there's a nice color, which sounds a bit like a tilting EQ for how the reverb uh, reacts to the sound that's coming in. There's multiple reverb models. Uh, yeah, big, echo, long, soft, quantum, endless was kind of interesting, of course. Let's have a listen. Yeah, tons and tons of things to mess around with and to, to find inspiration in the effects. Another thing that I found that I really enjoyed is actually the fact that this at some place in its chain has a compressor in it. So let me go to the master. Let me show you what this compressor is doing uh, to this sound and what a huge difference it makes. So that's the naked sound, uh, the, cl the clear kind of semi-unprocessed sound coming out of the uh, Iridium. By the way, I didn't say this, uh, but it's important maybe. What I'm doing here is I'm recording out of the Iridium straight into a converter. Uh, yeah, I've just unplugged it off of my converter here. So, because I wanted to give you the clearest possible representation of this sound, so I think the only thing that's kind of a little bit special here is that it's going through some uh, Prism Orpheus converters, which of course are super nice, but yeah, you're getting like a really good uh, quality that way. Uh, but there's no processing, of course, anywhere with all my output stuff. That would be super unfair. Coming back to the compressor, I think you just had a listen to what it does, how much more character it imparts on the sound. I'm going to tell you the good thing about it and the bad thing about it.
and on and on. So the compressor is awesome. However, it reacts to both patches. So if you're running the baseline just at exactly where you want it in the compression and you start adding the pad, which is the thing I have on the second layer, it'll start over compressing a bit. And I guess it tries to keep the level, the output level overall the same, but you'll lose your base a bit. So you may have to fidget around with the levels of both uh, that you keep your overall feeling. Uh, but yeah, the compressor sounds amazing. Uh, I really like that it's in there. Voices I've shown you, levels. Uh, yeah, there's like a whole bunch of really nice monitoring on it also, which is pretty cool. So this little button on the bottom is showing you the voices I'm using. The blue is the baseline, the green is the pad. Uh, check out what happens when you push it. I love the fact that they've gone so totally over the top and made something like that. That's already very functional. Also something that you can use to see, you know, what your signal would look like on a spectrum analyzer. That's very, <laughs> very over the top. That's very Waldorf music. Uh, super cool. Uh, in all fairness and all honesty, I haven't even started digging into the more advanced, um, what do you call it, uh, synthesis methods that it offers. You can put your own samples in there. It's got like kernels and glibs and globs and wavetables, of course, waveforms, particles, resonators, and what is it, kernels? Like it has so many different things. Everything I've shown you so far is just using it like a standard synthesizer with just like your, you know, usual kind of uh, waveforms that, you know, you tend to have on, on synths. And that already is kind of just for me, it's been like mind blowing. I'm sure I'll do more in depth videos on the more complex um, stuff that it has inside related to the synthesis forms that are, you know, uh, wave table or, or, or resonator particle based. But yeah, like just this, the punch that it has, the clarity that it has, uh, the way you can mess with it has been super, super uh, interesting for me to use the, the, the performance features as well as the user interface combined with this really great step sequencer with an amazing shuffle and, and groove feeling. Um, I'm really happy that I've taken the time to dive into it and I'm really grateful for Waldorf for sending me this so that I could check it out um, because yeah, it's an incredible synth. Um, and yeah, I hope this video has been useful to you to get an idea of uh, what I think is uh, really cool about um, the Waldorf Iridium for electronic music, for techno, melodic techno, progressive house, stuff like that, uh, and how you can potentially use it in your setup. Yes, if this is the video that takes you over the edge and you decide to go for it and grab yourself an Iridium, there's affiliate links down below, which means you can support the channel at no extra cost to you. We get a kickback if you buy one of these uh, at Toman. And actually, I was just on the site checking, and the, right now they're selling the keyboard version for the same price as the desktop module which I don't really understand why, but hey, <laughs> better for you. So yeah, if you want to grab this synthesizer uh, through one of our affiliate links, uh, that would really help the channel. Uh, they're down below in the description. There is a rack top version of it. And if I can be really honest, I would absolutely go for the key version because the keyboard is next level. And it's really nice to have one instrument right in front of you that you can do everything with in real time because of the way it just feels like a complete instrument. And it's amazing to use. Uh, thank you very much, Achim and uh, Axel and all the other wonderful people uh, at uh, Waldorf Winfried. Thank you. And uh, we look forward to uh, making further videos on this amazing instrument. We have some other uh, cool instruments coming up and uh, signal processes that we're going to be showing you. But uh, yeah, if you want to dive further into sound design on the world of Iridium, check out the video linked somewhere here in the description because I'm going to show you how to make these sounds from scratch. Cool. All right. Uh, I hope you have a great time in the studio and I'll see you on the next video. And don't forget to check out our uh, templates uh, and pre-mix sample packs. Uh, what you see in the left bottom here is our template for uh, Bitwig. As you see, we're just running sound into it uh, in real time, but because there is a pretty sick mastering chain on this, uh, we're getting the quality of sound that we're getting out of it. So it sounds kind of like a finished track. And yeah, you have this at your disposal if you want to make uh, music really quickly. Check out rapidflow.shop or the link below and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Bye-bye.